Whether you're a camel owner, wannabe camel owner, or simply an adoring camel fan, you're in the right place for some fun, useful, and interesting camel talk. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. Join us here for fun learning about camels, how to care for, train, and handle them, plus insider stories and interviews. And also some interesting stories of our lifestyle with camels, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the very funny. Make sure you've subscribed now so you don't miss out on an episode. Now, some of these podcasts are an audio take of our video, so be sure to check those out on our blog for lots of how-to visuals and, of course, lots of camels. This is your one and only go-to podcast, all about camels. Welcome back to the Camel Connection podcast. Oh, here we are again. Yay. Hi. Oh. Hi, Russell. Hi, Tara. How Hi. You going? Hi, everyone. Oh, I saw you last night. Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> you saw them this morning too. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, hope you're all doing well. We are excited to be back for yet another podcast. We love doing these so mm. much because we get to share a lot more information with you. You get to hear from both of us rather than just reading something. You don't know who's talking really. Mm. You can write anything you like, but when someone speaks, it's all different. Yeah, isn't for sure. it? Yeah. So we're about to leave to go to India. 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 And honestly, by the time you listen to this, we'll be, we would have just landed in India and we will be in a village um, with our newly brought six female camels and um, we will be starting to train them mm. with a group of people from our community here. So this is really exciting. Uh, it sure is. And, uh, you know, one of the most uh, important parts or what I consider an important part of being in business is the ability to be able to give back, and and um, and you know anyone who knows my history. I mean, I got into camels originally for charity, and um, and then business came second, uh, or after the you know the initial purpose of getting into camels. But if we combine the two, then uh, you know that's 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 really something. And so these camels are actually going to get donated. They are. They're going to get donated to um, a village of Rika people, which basically these people believe that they were born to help camels, raise camels and all this stuff, which is amazing and I can so relate. Mm. <laughs> um, so we're going to be staying with these um, people. Oh, I'm just, I feel like it's a funny feeling. Like I'm feeling really emotional because I think, Like, we're leaving the family, we're leaving our farm and we're leaving our loved ones. But I feel like this journey is going to be really impactful um, on the the six people that are coming along on the journey and also to us on a personal level. Um, Just meeting people, the beautiful Riker people, um, being amongst their camels and their culture with an open mind, it's just going to be phenomenal. Like, I really can't wait. And I, I'm a, see, I'm a bit of a, I'm, I'm a bit of a, I, I mean, I practice yoga. So I know yoga originates from India. So I'm really looking forward to going home, really, to um, a place where I, I feel like I'm familiar with already, even though I haven't been there yet. So I'll let you all know. Mm. Mm. There you go. <laughs> so, I'm going for different reasons. What, what are you going for? Oh, for the Pushka Camel Festival. Oh, that too. Yeah. But camels are yoga. Like, this is how I see it. Like, camels are like the guru of, of yoga. I mean, they're good at being still. They're good at being quiet. They're good at meditating, like sitting in the sun and just, mom. <laughs> um, they're just good at so many things um, pertaining to the qualities of yoga. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, did you? You never told me that. Oh, really? Never. Oh, well, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Okay. So, there you Very go. Good. There you go. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. Um, so, okay, today's topic, we're talking to you and hopefully you're very pleased to hear the five reasons why you need a camel. 
Aha, uh-huh. well. And I don't know if you already different. need an excuse to have a camel, but we're going to give you a whole pile of them, a whole five of them, actually. <laughs> actually, uh, these are just five ideas that we've come up with, but I'm sure there's a lot more. But the very fact that you're actually listening to this podcast really does show something that, you know, camels are in your life in some shape, way, form mm-hmm. or another. Even if it's a whole pile of ornaments. Even if it's <laughs> just simply dreaming of camels or, yeah. or thinking about them. The very fact that you're here listening to this, uh, camels are a part of your life. Absolutely. Yeah, and even those that think that, you know, um, I'm not in position to buy a camel, I want to buy one in a couple of years or whatever, you're here, you're listening, um, and just, you know, take in all these um, all these things we're about to say, these five reasons on why you need a camel, because I think you'll really get a lot of information for it. Now, I've got something for everybody too, so whether you're that type of person that... <sighs> prefers to have animals as pets and not use them for riding or whatever we're going to cover that um if you're more of a practical personality and that animal needs to do something to contribute to society or or whatever we're going to cover that and we're also going to cover some eco-friendly kind of solutions to um to farming and stuff um also for camels so we've got everything for uh we've got something for everybody um, listen in and we shall get started. Absolutely. So I don't know if to follow chronological order or just kind of, should I follow one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, look, <laughs> we'll start one, two, three, four, five. We'll probably end up back on two and then three yeah. to four. And, okay. You know, whatever. All right. Yeah. All right. But we'll, we'll list these steps out in our, um, in our blog where this podcast will be posted as well. So follow that link if you want to, um, to read as well as listen. All right, so number one. Do you remember what you wrote for number one? No, I don't. Oh, really? <laughs> it was only <laughs> like 10 minutes ago. Oh, that's all right. What's happened <laughs> since then? Owen has showed us a treasure chest in Minecraft. Yeah, no, he wasn't sure what it was. Well, he said it was a treasure chest. Oh, okay. So well, there's something else. The and he's chest. like, oh, my God, look uh, what I found. I'm like, what is it? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, this combining business with a family is very interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the conversations, if you're a fly on a wall, that would uh, be quite funny. Yeah. Um, okay, so five reasons why you need a camel. Number one, um, eco- how do you, eco- ecological. <laughs> I can't say it. Ecological. 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 E- e- <laughs> you want a lolly in there? You can have a lolly. All right. Do Eco- you want to cover this? Because you seem really, you like this Ecological. Part. Here's a look. What do I write? Okay. Uh, just on my notes. What have we got here? Ecological. Weed controllers. <laughs> you can keep that. Oh, uh, yeah. Weed controllers. I'll tell you what. That is a big one. And uh, we often get people uh, who are investigating getting into camels for weed control. Now... Um, mm. Where do we begin with this? Yes, they're brilliant at weed control, but not every weed. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, they they certainly do. I mean, we've got a paddock um, in the place that we're now 12 months in uh, here, and it was coated, absolutely coated, you know, um, almost shoulder depth Mm. uh, in blackberries. And now there's little pathways and... um, You can actually walk through the paddock. Yeah, and the blackberries that are there are are down um, probably um, just below your knee. Yeah. And uh, and there's certainly not many of them. So, you know... They're managing those really well. I mean, I'm a bit upset because I won't get blackberry free. (laughs) <laughs> like never, <laughs> ever again. But um, they, I'm su- I'm surprised of how well they manage that. Yeah, and all the grasses and the herbs that are growing in between, uh, like in the little pathways that they've made. Yeah. Uh, you know that that's food for them as well. And, you know, yes. I love so I've, they, it just they're so smart, aren't they? Like they'll eat the weed and then allow the the other new shoots to to come through the grasses and the herbs and all. That well, sort I don't of know stuff. if that's. Because the camel's sitting there thinking, now, if I chew a pathway through here, then the herbs <laughs> How do you know, are... though? Oh, well, I'm pretty damn sure. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I really can't but... see Taggles doing that. No? No, no I don't. No, no but I, I do... think you'd be more interested in... The, there's the, there's the, uh, the blackberries. I'm gonna I suppose them. on a whole, camels are really just, um, you know, like set up just to, to be like the amazing animal that they are you know well, like yeah. they can eat they eat they prefer to eat up high rather than down low they'll eat down low obviously if that's available to them yeah um yeah so 
as I, I think they think more than you think. Well, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't well, mean it go, like that. <laughs> do you actually think they'd go to say, now, if I clear this area, I could put petunias in? Well, they wouldn't say petunias, yeah. but I honestly think <laughs> that they probably, you underestimate them. No, but anyway, look, they have cleared these blackberries. And uh, look, I do know that there's certain weeds and, um, and plants that uh, they can't eat. I mean, uh, uh, often you hear you know, camels can't have lantana, for example. And mm. I know lantana is a big issue, especially um, further north of where we're at. Um, but, uh, you know, you have to check out what you've got on your property, first of all, if you're going to consider actually getting camels for weed control. Yes. Um, now, in saying that, of course, uh, you know, you just don't simply buy a bunch of camels and just stick them in a paddock and hope for the best. Mm. Um, you know, they're still... They still need some care and attention, of course, with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, look, um, making sure they've got the right mineral mix and all that sort of thing. Parasitic um, um, control. Parasitic issues uh, that need to be under control. So you still need to be able to handle them. Mm. And that's where, you know, look, I mean, you know, if you're taking one of our courses, for example, and, uh, you know, take the camels through that, and then at least you'll have your weed controllers under control. <laughs> <laughs> How's that sound? Oh, I'm sold on it. Where can I sign up? Oh, yeah, straight <laughs> oh that's away. right. I teach it. Yeah. Um, great. Well, yeah, I don't really have anything more to add to that because, I mean, we don't have camels for weed control. It just happens to be mm. a bonus. So if you're one of those people where um, a family member close to you won't let you get a camel, then you can say, well, did you know yeah. they will eat our blackberries or our cape weed or blah, 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 blah. All those sorts of things and we don't have to use those toxic chemicals yeah. around the place. And then anymore. you get to have them... As a pet, which leads us into the perfect segue as our next number two reason why you should have a camel. Which is the personal connection. But you know what I'd also add into the business venture? Because if you're thinking about weed control and you've got a partner, for example, who's a little bit mm, not so well about camels, you know, whatever, okay, then you could say, well, just think about it when they come up <laughs> to summertime where you can get the wool. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. And make things out of the wool. Yes. That's yeah. number three on our list. Yeah. Well, Shall we dive into the pet first? Because this one is yeah. probably my favourite yeah, yeah, part. Because, yeah. I mean, camels are incredible pets. Like, um, they're big, they're goofy, they're just, they're so loving and so kind. And they're, they're happy just to be a pet too, which is also really cool. Because mm. um, not all animals, like apparently zebras, <laughs> they don't like being handled so much. I learned that in America. Yeah. And zorses and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I suppose that makes sense given their, her- their Where heritage. From. Yeah, and, and the lots of stuff. Are. Yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah. Anyway, so camels and connecting with them. You know, if you're one of those people that just loves having animals around, um, having a camel in your life will just, um, how do you say, expand that you know, a hundredfold. They really are delightful to be around. Oh, like, there's something peaceful about having camels just hanging around. There is, pe- yeah, you're right. Mm. It's sort of like they add this element of peace, calm, and tra- 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 oh. tranquility. Thank you. I yeah. can't get my words out today. <laughs> Tranquilizer. <laughs> peace, calm, and tranquilizing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, and they just, they really are wonderful pets. And they love being a pet too. So, you know, they love being groomed. They love, um, obviously, you know, um, they love being worked as well, which we'll get into the next next reason after this one. Mm. Um, gosh, I mean, how do we explain it in words? What it's like to have a pet camel? Like, I mean, we've well, got for a start. For a start, um, let me just say that uh, you'd probably be one out of the box in your local area. Mm. Uh, there's not many camels. Let's face it, um, that are out there in the paddocks as paddock ornaments um, or pets. Um, yeah, plenty of horses, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, see them standing out there thinking, oh, I wonder if anyone rides a horse. And you still see the horse standing there the next day and the next day and the next day. And maybe that people do. I don't know. I mean, mm. you know, of course we're not, uh, you know. I mean, if I if I had a horse, I would certainly, like, we, we were just having this exact conversation because in December we're, we're, we're doing a camel cuddle and grooming session where – we're not riding, like you know, as as a as a customer, you're not riding the camel, you're not trekking with the camel, you're actually just being with the camel, mm. and so many people want that from an animal. Like I prefer to be with my animals than than um, I mean, I love working them as well, but 
to be with them is is so powerful within itself and creates uh, almost like a sense of calm in yourself. And I know that a lot of you that are camel owners out there, you could totally relate to this, Um, you know, whether consciously or subconsciously, they sort of add this calmness to to your life. And um, I would, yeah, personally, I'd love to give that out more. So therefore, we're doing the camel cuddles and grooming in December. If you want to join us, look us up. Mm. Or send us a message and we'll tell you more. Anyway, that was a small little plug. Yeah, <laughs> I think we plug. went a little bit off Very track. Very plug. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, camels as pets. Um, obviously, like any of these steps we're suggesting, or these, you know, five reasons why you need a camel, a camel needs to be um, handled and, and trained. And so do you. At, well, that's what I meant. But not everyone realised that's what I mean. Right. So thank okay. you. <laughs> so let me let me just clarify that point there. Okay, it's uh, the camel. Um, yeah, wants to understand what it is that's required of them, mm. and uh, and that's your job. Yeah. And uh, and so you know to, to go ahead and say, oh, I've trained dogs before. Guess what? A dog's not a horse, and a horse is not a camel. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and so you know, getting the right advice is actually the important part, and the right training method, and the right you know something that fits with you. Yes. Um, and you know something that you know is going to produce results. Absolutely. Mm. And you know, if you've got a pet camel, it will need to have some sort of medical attention, At one way stage. or another. I mean, you know, there's there's a very common disease in Australia um, and the United States. I'm not sure about other places around the world called osteodystrophy, and this is in camels, and it's it's very common and it's deadly, and that will need treating if it, if necessary. Obviously, parasites need to be under control because camels mm. don't have the resistance like other animals do to parasites. Yeah. And look, they they're goofy and they might step on something and you need to attend to that or, mm. you know, you might have to put some cream on, you know, a patch where, you know, I don't know, a bumblebee might go ahead and bite them or mm. something, mm. you know, there's always something that needs to be done. Yes. Um, it's not consistent. Um, the camel is pretty good at just looking after themselves, mm. but occasionally things need to, you know, be attended to. And one of the most um, handy things you'll ever learn, you and your camel, is teaching them how to sit. Absolutely. So, like... I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit kind of forward. But Russell says a camel that can't sit is a, a, a useless camel, mm. which you know is kind of true um, in the sense that you know if you've got one as a pet, um, then yeah, it needs to learn how to sit. More to the point, it means that it's under control. Yeah. Okay, that you and the camel have an understanding. Yes. And that you and the camel can at least do that activity. Yes. Which means that you can attend to their wound if they've got a wound for mm-hmm. example you know, things happen yes you know, unfortunately they do. things do happen so yeah personal connection hey look you know they're, they're, they are a marvelous animal to have around oh Absolutely. we get to see them outside our window and if you've got a business you know that to say for example a b&b uh, you know, country B&B, mm. right? And you've got you know, a pet camel in the, or a couple of camels because you know, mm-hmm. being a herd animal, I should really have a mate. Always buy them in pairs. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you've got a couple of camels out there in the paddock that, you know, are nice, calm and gentle because you've done something with them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's a, that's a plus for your B&B. You Absolutely. Know? Come a lot, B&B, you know. It's an attraction. All that sort of thing. Yeah. And, I mean, especially in Australia, the more camels that um, people have, the less likely are that they're being shot out in the desert. So, um, you know, that's definitely something we stand greatly for is, is kind of making the little bit of difference by, you know, um, obtaining... Um, some camels that most of them, I mean, all our camels originate from the wild except for one out of our 15. Um, yeah, you're mm. basically saving their lives. So, um, great. All right. Should we go into the next point? Okay. So, the reason why you need a camel, okay, is, uh, well, I mean, maybe you have the need for a business venture. You've got an idea. You might live in one of those fantastic areas around the place uh, that has a feature for it beach or a nice walking track or something like that and you think to yourself now how can I maybe I'm sick of my job maybe I'm sick of working for the man maybe I want my own business and uh, and so you're looking around you're thinking of ideas and look there's so many ideas out there let's face it but camels is definitely another one and uh, we're persistent uh, people with um, uh, the milking the camel milking industry um, you know for making cosmetics uh, to you know safaris and rides and that sort of stuff and mm. just as a petting zoo as well you mm. know we've got a whole bunch of animals 
So there's all sorts of business. They that can go ahead. one of, one of my I would say one of my strengths is coming up with ideas for camel businesses <laughs> or any business really. But like I'm always coming up with new ideas, and um, this will actually be a podcast coming up um, towards the end of the year and early next year um, for more business camel business related things. But you got to find something obviously that like okay, let me just be straight. Rides and safaris is not the only camel thing that you can do to make no, money. That's right. Um, and we know this because we've tried pretty well, much everything yeah. except for everything we haven't tried yet. <laughs> yeah, well, we haven't ventured into actually having our own milk production. No. No. But we're not going to. Well, I mean, I might do that in 10 years' time. <laughs> you know, that might be something that I want. Yeah, you know. Oh, you make me laugh. I might like sure. do it, you know. Yeah. you know. yeah, we'll put that one on the list. Yeah. yeah. Um. But, yeah, business venture, I mean, that's definitely a great incentive to, to get camels. I mean, we've got a few clients that have, um, you know, have had that as an initial idea, bought them as pets. It's like a five-year goal. And they know that you know, moving forward that they've now got these camels um, because it takes time to yeah. train these camels up. Um, yes, you can do it in five days or seven days and then put them out there and just hope for the best and hope that people don't get bucked off and all that sort of stuff. But... I think um, from our perspective, and if you're on board with this, then you'd love our training, is that we want to build that really strong bond and really strong trust with the animal, and we want to learn them inside out. Mm -hmm. You know, our camels aren't commercial camels. They're firstly our pets. Well, firstly, they're our family. Secondly, our pets. (laughs) And... Um, you know, we want to we want to make sure we know them inside out before asking them to do something a little bit more um, higher higher up in in their camel career, like um, putting a person on their back and so forth. Um, now, what I've noticed is like if that is if that connection and trust is not built before asking them to do something more commercially, you, you kind of have more problems. Yeah, there's more element of risk. And, well, when I say problems, it's more of like you, you have m- more misunderstandings with this camel and you, you can't seem to figure each other out sort of thing. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Not okay. necessarily yeah. like people getting yeah. bucked yeah, off yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. So, I mean, because a lot of camels are trained to ride and a lot of camels training are, are doing it commercially, but to figure that camel out is a whole other subject. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, within your training... Um, you can go through the mechanics and uh, the camel will go ahead and do those mechanics. Yes, but then like if, sit down, stand up, yeah, be led, have stuff, a saddle. Right? You can do all those mechanical things and that's fine. But really what the important part is is the connection. And, and the camel believes that's an important part too when well, it happens. Like yeah, they prefer and the that. owner who really actually does care about the camel actually sees that, you know, first and foremost. Yes. And, and, uh, and, and so if something's a little bit different... Say, for example, you know, you've been doing this ride, okay? You know, I'm going round in circles somewhere. And, uh, and and something's a little bit different. The camel reacts in a different way. And you don't actually see what the difference is. Okay? Yes. You don't actually see it. But you just think, well, what's going on? You know, this is different. You know, the machine is not working properly. It's doing you something know? out of the ordinary. There's something not happening with this machine. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to change this machine or I'm going to have to... Change you know, myself. Oh, my God. Uh, do something, <laughs> you know, what's going on? But really, if you have a look from the world, from the camel's perspective and, uh, you know, have a good understanding and a, co- a connection with that camel, then you would have seen that right from the word go. Mm-hmm. And uh, because you, you're reacting as one uh, with the camel and that's that's the important part. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying that things don't happen. Yes, um, they do happen. Yeah, and they do happen, but... Uh, yeah, to actually have a greater understanding as to who a camel really is and actually understand who's under that skin mm-hmm. um, while you're going through the mechanical process. And this is why we don't hire staff as well for commercial purposes. <laughs> yeah. Because we, like, yes, anybody can come in and we can train them how to lead camels down the beach if we're doing the beach rides or do the safaris, but 
they're our freaking children. You know, we want people, when we hire a nanny, we, 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 you know, we really vet them out and we, we do several interviews with them and all that sort of stuff and we, we explain everything and if they're really passionate, you know, they're pretty much hired. Um, and it's the same with, well, we haven't hired any, any other camel handers, handlers because a lot of people want to learn about camels, uh-huh. but do you want to be with the camel? <laughs> do you want to be a camel? Do you want to be a camel? <laughs> because you have to be in order to to want to to want to work with our camels in particular. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> they're, they're they're like I mean yeah they're they're our babies really. It's kind of like you know I'm thinking of Coco in particular. Oh. Like he's very misunderstood. Yeah, if you and, don't understand Coco, then you just think oh the machine's broken. Yeah. <laughs> um and but I you know it took me a while to understand him, but you you got him and then I just like he's my man like and it was Taggles is another camel like they all got these individual personalities and how it takes years to to learn them inside out you know um and that yeah i don't really know what my point is but the point is that i love my camels and I don't, <laughs> we don't hire staff for those reasons so we kind of in i guess you can say some ways limit our business to to us to to handle these big large camels um so that um, they're being handled properly and correctly and all that sort of stuff. But that's how we want it and that's fine, you know. And, and if you've got a commercial operation you're doing something differently, that's fine too. That's, oh, yeah. This is that's just cool. us and what, right. what we're up to. We're only just relaying what we do. Yeah. Mm, mm. So, yeah, business ventures. I mean, you know, there's great great need for the milk and um, there's great need for the cosmetics. Um, you know, there, there is a need for people to do something different in their lives and with a safari, for example, out in the bush, or or even just to have that little bit of time, you know, the one-on-one. You open know, farms, uh, they can do uh, open. I mean, yeah. this is a whole other podcast that's coming up in, in like a month's time. So if you're interested in, in camel bi- opening up your own camel business venture um, and or you've always wanted to, Make sure you tune in and stay stay regular on our social pages and and on our email list because that is coming up and I can't wait because it's yeah. like I love talking about. And that you stuff. don't have to do what everyone else has done in the no. past. No, right? this is the important part. You know, you got a business idea, go for it. Mm-hmm. Just as simple as that, go for it. You don't have to compare yourself to anyone that's done anything in the past, or, mm-hmm. and, uh, and you don't have to you know be judged or anything else about it. You know, you just simply do what it is that you want to do, mm-hmm. um, so long as it's within the realms of safety and you know you've ticked all the boxes. Well, you know, and the camel's welfare, yeah. Well, well, yeah. What's the problem? Yep. What is the problem? Yeah. So let's go on to point number four. Five. Four. Oh, did we four. miss one? Yes, we've missed one. What have we missed? Oh, we've missed one. Oh, so that was three. Okay. That so. was three. I told you we'd go back to one. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done one, two. Um, so we've done first one, the ecological side of things, the mm-hmm. weed control. Number two, um, having camels as a personal pet um, and having that personal connection with them. Yeah. Number three, um, using them as a business venture. Yeah. And number four, um, travel. Yeah, for traveling. Actually, can I go back? Forget to point the number... caravan people and the RV. <laughs> this I... is the go. <laughs> can I go back to point number two? <laughs> I just want to go back to point. Oh, number okay. Two, go on to that. Connection. There's a lady uh, that uh, we haven't done it yet, unfortunately, but uh, I still mean to do so. Um, uh, an elderly lady, and uh, she she's at home most of the time, and but she loves camels, and I met her granddaughter. Uh, once when we were on the beach doing the beach rides and uh, and she said my grandmother just loves camels but she doesn't get out a great deal um, but uh, you know she would love to wake up I know she would you know and just wake up and all of a sudden there's camels in the backyard and I thought to myself you know that's that's really cool you know to and I thought well when, when can we coordinate? And unfortunately, we just haven't yet, uh, but coordinate a day where uh, in the morning I bring a couple of camels around to her place before she opens up the curtains <laughs> just secretly and, uh, and have the camels there um, outside the kitchen window when she opens up the curtains. And she was, she, I, her, gra- her granddaughter actually said um, she would honestly sit there on the veranda all day just watching the camel. Yeah, you know, the, that's that beautiful. Anyway, cam- uh, personal tracks or ca- camel tracking. Travel. Know, travel, yeah, if you want to travel differently. If now, you if you, you want go. to camels. slow travel. Now, let me just explain what slow travel is. Slow travel is obviously travelling slowly, but not just that, but rather than travelling in a car, getting to a destination, see a place, do the things in the place. Slow travel allows you to feel the places, which is different. Now, 
if you know what I mean by feel, then you know what I mean. But if you don't know what I mean by feel, it, it's like you're, you're already, so you just say you're going from A to B. A has got all these different landmarks and maybe there's, you know, a town there or something, but B is something different. It's like this beautiful, slow transition and you're passing all the landscape and you're actually part of the journey, not just in the journey. Um, and obviously camels are a great way to be part of that. So, um, and I know that friends of ours, Bernadette and um, Rob, um, who you, their whole life is travel with camels, basically. They go home up into Queensland, you know, for a couple of months of the year and then go off for another two years. Yeah, they're, but they're just on their way back now. This is their life. And I, I asked Bernadette, I said, what, tell me about, like, I just wanted to pick her brain a little bit you know, to get an understanding and um, or to reconfirm my understanding of it. Um, you know, wh- what do you love about travelling slowly like this? And she goes, well, you don't just get to, get to see the environment and the land but you get to feel it and i'm like yeah. yes that is the word yeah. i was just recently talking to one of our um, our clients uh well he's a very client um who's about to embark on his own journey shout out to john elliott yeah john elliott yeah good on you mate you know, <laughs> you're not a client you're yeah, a friend you're a friend you're a friend client <laughs> client friend whatever you want to call we it, don't you like know, the word client yeah, we'll call you, yeah, call you, you know, i won't call you a maphrodite um, that's not right. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, and we're talking about because um, he's going to go walking across Australia with his camels that he's um, acquired and purchased and trained, you know, using our training method and all that sort of stuff, and and uh, he's built his gear and you know we're sort of mentoring him through this whole process in a way, and um, and he realizes that you know he's got a sixty percent chance of making it, so he's going to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. Sixty percent's higher than fifty. And I think, well, good on you, mate. You know, you're 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 working with the odds, um, <laughs> and but being slow travel, you can actually nut out your problems. Yeah. And uh, but what what really impressed me was uh, when I did my track. You know, going through through all these Aboriginal communities and whatnot, they treated you differently um, to. A person say they're rocking up, up in, in a four, a four drive. drive, yeah. And the reason is, is because you're a traveller, mm-hmm. right? You're not a tourist, mm-hmm. and and also you're part of the land. You're sort of travelling the land in. Well, many Aboriginal communities they uh, used to travel from community to community mm-hmm. via camel, and uh, and even before that, of course, you know they walked the country, and so they're travelling the country and feeling it, and you know that they're sort of. There's a, there's a re, rela, re uh, what's it what's the word um where you can relate with each other a lot more relatable it's relatable yeah um, the very fact that you're walking uh, and travelling slowly and using these wonderful animals to um, to carry all your gear and food and water and you you do um, yeah you get people coming up to you and just like. Wow, I'm in awe of what you're doing, and I think it, I think our evolution process is in part of us is, is that part of us where we all want to slow travel. It's just how do we find the time? You know, I mean, like we couldn't have slowed travel to America because it would have taken us years <laughs> by boat or whatever. Yeah, I don't know, but people months, have done it. huh? But people have done it. Yeah, exactly. But you know, like there is an advantage to the to the faster travel and like we're going to India literally overnight and all that sort of stuff but the slow travel really just slows you down the animals I mean the camels particularly love slow travel I mean they are excellent at plotting they are great plotters they are not runners by nature um they just plod I That's like, what they're good like at. Yeah. So it yeah, is. It, it's an easy thing for them. And you know, if you, they've got they've got weight, you know, uh, packs and stuff on. That's fine too. You train them into that. It's not a problem. Yeah. Um, and they just plod. They're good at just walking. They get their momentum and they just walk. They just do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they just do it. And, and obviously, having a travel companion like a camel is pretty pretty exceptional. I mean, I couldn't think of a better traveling companion. Dogs are pretty high up there, but camels. They're very practical. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you do meet interesting people along the way because you're actually going backwards in time and using the animals, you know, to, as your method of transportation and all that sort of thing. Um, you've gone backwards in time, you know, and it has, it's not all that long ago. You know, like just recently mm-hmm. um, I went ahead and buried mum and dad together mm-hmm. um, in, in the grave, as you know. 
And, well, you know. I, I do. You know. <laughs> People in radio land might not know. Podcast <laughs> land, I should say. Um, but Dad was born up in a uh, an era of horse and cart. And he went... Um, Amazing. He went uh, to school on horse and cart. And... Um, and that's the method of transportation. So what Just would that be? That How many years ago? Top. Well, he was 80, 86 uh, when he died. So we're looking, you know. Seven years ago. S- 70 odd years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, Amazing. So it's not all that long since, you know, the car has become fashionable. And nowadays, I mean, you know, if you're travelling some other way, such as with camels, and you're looked on as, uh, well, this is really unusual. Mm. But it's only 70 odd years that it's been fashionable mm-hmm. to have something else. Although the Amish still do it. And that's yep. something we missed out on in America, which we I'd did. love to go back because there's some Amish that actually um, to harness up their camel and go and do their shopping at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I love that. Oh my God. I'd Why love not? to go back and just, leave, you know, be with them for a few days and just yeah. see how they do it. I... I'd like to actually go down to the main street of the local town here with the camels and, uh, you know, just pull up outside Woolworth. Yeah. Uh, where's, where's the hitching post? Yeah. But there are hitching posts in, oh, this is what we learnt from American friends, in some of the states, they hit, there's hitching posts in front of Walmart and the supermarkets. Yeah. And yeah. No, we need them here. <laughs> That's so cool. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. There's the option. Yes. Yeah. And, of course, like, you know, if you need help in um, training uh, to do your own... <laughs> what are you doing? No, nah, it's all right. <laughs> the face. Nothing at all. <laughs> oh, okay. I could not not laugh at that because the face was just awful. Oh, you guys are not seeing the face. No, anyway, no um, this is the thing with radio. You can sort of do whatever you like. Um so uh, okay, so we covered we covered the personal trip. If you need help with the you know um, getting getting stuff together, getting your training together, getting ready for a camel trek or expedition, um, get in touch with us again. We've got a training, a whole actual online training course dedicated to camel expedition. How to prepare yourself for that? Well, that's for desert stuff mainly, though. Isn't it? Yeah, oh, but no, it's a lot really. of it's transferable. A bit of information just as is. I I use a lot of that information in my charity trek I did You're back in sixteen. Yeah. yeah. So that's Mm. fine. Um, Yeah, you know where to come. Anyway, we're here to help. Um, So number five. Number five. The the fifth reason why you need a camel. Okay. Can I start with this one? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, good. Especially after doing that. (laughs) Since I wrote it. Um, (laughs) Okay. So the other reason I thought of why you uh, need camels in your life, or perhaps you feel as though you need a camel in your life, um, is charity. Perhaps you got the idea of doing a charity track. Or, more to the point, perhaps you got the idea of using camels in some way, shape or form uh, to involve your philanthropy work, whatever and that And that be. could be a therapy thing too yep. for disabled children or whatever. Not Absolutely. that you can't make money off that, I'm just saying that's as an example. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is, is one way. Yeah, that's right. You know, there's camel rides for you know, kids in wheelchairs, for example, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know, perhaps you've, you've, you've got some sort of ideas. Is there something that's really close to your heart and you think, hmm, that's what I'd like to do is to set up a farm or something like that or set part of my farm up. And uh, and one of the features can be the philanthropy work. That, uh, you that just reminds about. me of an interview that's coming up. We, we've done the interview, but the, ne- the podcast is coming up um, in the next oh, podcast. Yeah. You're going to love this. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you're interested in um, using camels for charity, you are going to love this interview we had totally. um, with Abby from Kenya. Yeah. She, she's amazing. She's, yeah. I won't give it too much away, but you, you tune in. Make sure you tune in for that episode because um, she's using camels for charity. She's using two le- her own two legs as well, yeah. and making a major impact in Kenya where it's much needed for um, for to stop discrimination against disabled uh, people. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway, so we're so excited. Oh, yeah, no, this was a great interview. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if we don't mind saying so ourselves. Well, was, she was amazing. She was amazing. She's very yeah. inspiring and we really love her work, so we're looking forward to sharing that with you. Absolutely. Okay, so shall we recap before we, we wrap up here? So yeah. five reasons why you need a camel. You've got our full permission. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, also, just quickly before covering the five tips, go back to if you go back to episode number two um, on this podcast or just um, Google camels for sale because that comes up to we're top of Google there. Um, 
on um, on buying tips for on how to you know, buying camels and buying tips, and also we cover the the biggest mistakes that people make when buying camels. Um, so make sure you listen to that, or you can read the blog, or like I said, just Google camels for sale, and you know click on our website when that comes up. And um, yeah, have a look at those buying tips because I think you'll find them most interesting and perhaps something you haven't thought of yet mm. um, in regards to buying camels. Okay. All right, so the first reason was ecology, okay? If you're thinking of uh, a natural form of weed control, Mm -hmm. uh, camels may be able to assist, Mm -hmm. okay? And if they can assist, I mean, with the type of weeds that you're looking at and the type of country um, that you've got and your preparedness to um, involve camels with your weed control issues, um, then, yeah, the camels certainly do have a place. Great. Right. Okay, so number two was having camels as a pet um, and for personal ke- connection, um, you know, whether that be having them on your farm or integrating them into um, pet slash weed control um, or a business venture and all that sort of stuff, um, a connection, having a personal connection with a camel, there is nothing else like it. Yep. Number three, business ventures, whether it be milking, cosmetics, safaris, rides, petting zoos, um, photography opportunities, nativity scenes, you know, the list goes on. Your imagination is Camel cuddles. Wild. Open farms. Uh, Milk. I think you said that. Like, no, sorry. I, <laughs> I, I, I get so really excited with business ideas. So, yeah, there, there's a the third reason. Great. And number four was travel, slow travel. If mm. you want to be one with the land and of, and obviously with the camel as well and you want to, to get in amongst the the environment in which you want to walk or travel, travel in, obviously you can use camels as the pack animals and um, enjoy that journey. For sure. And the fifth one, if you're involved or you want to be involved in charity work, whatever shape or form that you do, you can use camels. Absolutely. Yeah. Simple as that. It is. And we've got some great podcasts coming up for you. One on Camel Business Ventures. I'm so excited because this is like... I really know it out on this stuff. So I'm going to give you lots of value away in that. Um, another podcast coming up is um, of a beautiful lady in Kenya who's using camels um, for charity and making a big impact there in Kenya. Yep. So much great things coming up, guys. So we're going to yes. – um, well, we will be in India by this time, so be thinking of us. Make sure you're following us on the social channels if you want updates on what we're up to in India. We're on Instagram at Australian Camels. We're on um, Facebook, Australian Camels, and also our personal profiles too. So, yes, how exciting. Fantastic. Uh, great. Great talking with everyone. Okay. We will catch you on the next episode. All righty. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye. If you like this information we've just shared with you, you'll be sure to love the free camel ebooks and training videos that we're giving away. We're giving away two camel ebooks, Introduction to Camels and Introduction to Camel Training. Plus, in our bonus camel training videos, we take you through training and handling camels built on connection and trust. And we also share how to understand a camel's way of thinking. This is gold information that you don't want to miss. So be sure to sign up now to get your free ebooks and training videos over at camelconnection.com.